Our daily diet. With so many different methods of consumption, how do you choose a simple yet effective way to get your daily intake? The friendly, knowledgeable folks at North American Nutrition have the answer. Nature's Gem Premium Omega-3. Unlike other flaxseed, our golden flax is grown on our farm in northern Minnesota, providing cooler temperatures and longer summer hours, producing the highest quality premium golden flax seed around. In addition, we selectively harvest and sort flax seeds by size and weight, keeping the best seeds that can produce the highest abundance of omega-3. The result is a delicious, nutty, buttery flavor. Nature's Gem Golden Flax is pure. There is nothing added and nothing taken away and non-GMO. We offer a 100% money back guarantee. Order Nature's Gem Premium Golden Flax today at goldenflax.com, goldenflax.com or, or call 800-387-5516. That's 800-387-5516. Free shipping included. A day unlike any other in the long course of American history, a terrorist act of war against this country. The enemy struck America on September 11th. Who is the enemy? Bin Laden. This is his M.O. We have to look to the Middle East. We have to look to Osama Bin Laden. Fabled Enemies is the first 9-11 film to take a close look at the terrorist ties to intelligence networks inside the United States. Some U.S. investigators believe that there are Israelis again very much engaged in spying in and on the U.S. I'm aware that uh, some Israeli citizens have been detained. Bin Laden's connections to the CIA, the hijackers' ties to the FBI, the Saudi Arabian connection, the Israeli intelligence network, warnings and war games, the shadow government, and much, much more. Fabled enemies. Get the DVD at InfoWars.com or see it in super high quality, along with hundreds of other titles at PrisonPlanet.tv. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. Doctors around the world that cancer and other diseases cannot live in a pH-balanced alkaline environment. But as you know, most people are overly acidic due to stress, acidic diet, and lack of exercise. pH balance is the foundation of energy abundance and perfect health, as well as prevention of disease. People who alkalize the water they drink experience normalized blood sugar, mental clarity, and loss of weight. It was intended for human beings to drink alkaline water. But due to modern way of life, most people are overly acidic. The fact is that disease simply cannot exist in an alkaline environment. Fat accumulates if a person consumes too much acid on a regular basis and doesn't neutralize it. Do your part. Alkalize and supercharge your body now. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops contain a special mineral salt concentrate that raises the pH of the water you drink up to the pH of 10 with only 10 drops. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops now by going directly to alkvision.com. Again, that's alkavision.com. Monday through Friday, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, the Info War has launched a new weapon in the assault against tyranny. The PrisonPlanet.tv live simulcast for this radio show turns into a television show. We've been doing this for two weeks now in the new studio, about eight months total. And again, the good news for all the viewers out there is it's having an effect. These TV programs on YouTube every week alone from a few channels we're looking at the numbers on over a million people tuning in and watching it. So uh, that is something added to the two million radio listeners per show and then just everything else. And the reason I keep plugging that is this is exciting because we're exponentially growing and reaching new people with this information and then meeting and finding new folks that have just done so many other incredible things. You know, I guess I'm a guy after your heart, you're a guy after my heart, because these stings, exposing things, I've done these on the military, I've done these on world leaders, with satanic activities, with the uh, Bohemian Grove, which is an offshoot of Skull and Bones, and then to, uh, I've seen one of your films, now to be ju just today seeing all this other footage, it's amazing. Now, now let's finish up with how this planting drugs works, answering the question, uh, uh, what percentage of police departments and units you believe are planting drugs, and then let's get into uh, this latest sting you ran that made international headlines. 85% are planting drugs would be my guess, and I'm probably under-guessing. And the public has no idea of this just unbelievable systemic corruption. The public knows, but for some reason, like my parents and grandparents trusted politicians to protect our freedoms, it seems like the younger generation have realized it's up to the citizenry to get our freedoms back. 
Now, going back to the department, uh, where, were you, where were you working? I mean, did you immediately as an officer become a narcotics officer? How did that happen? And then what was the first time they said, let's plant drugs? Mm, I basically overwhelmed law enforcement pretty fast. I climbed in the first year. I was already, already had my own drug dog that I was training for narcotics. And where was that? That was a, a Big Sandy Police Department. I made over 100 drug arrests in a year and a half on only five miles of highway with my new drug dog. And that's what got the attention of the Permian Basin Drug Task Force out in West Texas. Uh, they were on, under the TNCP program, Texas Narcotics Control Program. And it was there at the Permian Basin Drug Task Force where I learned to do all of these corrupt things. And give us a case point example. Mm, probably one of the things that we repeated over and over is we claimed an informant saw drugs in somebody's house, and that was enough probable cause for a search warrant when the truth is an informant had never been in the house to see the drugs. We called it a ghost informant, and we knew being on a local state level, our informants did not have to show up in court and testify like they do a lot in federal court, so we were protected. Either so way. no right to face the accuser. Right. We lied on the search warrants, claiming a confidential informant saw the drugs when they didn't. And what would you do then uh, with, with the drug planting? The drug, most of the drug planting took place through an, an informant. Um, we would pull over somebody on the highway and arrest them for drugs and explain to them they did three deals for us that we wouldn't file this case. And the three deals means set somebody up for drugs. And uh, the informants would actually go into the house, hide the drugs in the cushion of a couch, come back out and tell us, hey, I just saw drugs in their house, and we would raid it the entire time the informant was the one who put the drugs in there. It's and, very common. And you wouldn't feel bad. I mean, later you did. It was, it was great to just go ruin somebody's life, to just go in, and because we're good guys fighting drugs, planting drugs. I guess the excuse was, we think this person is a drug dealer? Well, they were. we couldn't catch them. We really believed they were a drug dealer, and we couldn't catch them using the legal ways. So we crossed those lines and lied. And it's sad. I, I didn't feel bad for what I was doing then. Like I said, I, I believed I was doing the greater good, but I feel horrible about it now. But, but during that period, though, you did wake up. Yes, it was uh, about three months before I quit law enforcement. I started noticing some things, and I quit law enforcement after I arrested the mayor's son with methamphetamine, and I arrested a city councilman with a bag of pot and a pistol, and then uh, I arrested three crooks that the DEA had been chasing for a long time, and I got them all in one sting operation. So that pressure pushed me out. I didn't realize the error of my ways until I started raising a family and met Candy. Oh, and <laughs> Yeah, and, and she started seeing the pain that was in me and saying, what's wrong? And I'd just start crying and tell her, you know, all these lives I'd ruined, and I didn't know what to do about it. He and, was truly a mess about it. Yeah. Truly so mess. she just kept taking the alcohol away. And when I'd get home in the evening, I'd go back to the bedroom and smoke a joint. And it took a, a year or so of healing and realizing and what to do next. And Figuring things out. Well, that's what's so incredible, though, about the demonization of marijuana itself. The apothecaries, or who the pharmacists were, going back to the when people were first here in the colony over 350 years ago, it was one of the number one prescribed things by doctors, by barbers, who were kind of like a uh, you know sub uh, doctor or like a nurse, and by the apothecaries, and it was sold uh, out of the Americas all over the world. Uh, ships filled with uh, hemp, with you know, the, they use the Mexican name marijuana, like it is now. <laughs> uh, absolutely, and and George Washington, you can read the old prescriptions from his doctor uh, for gout and for heads and stomach aches. Uh, George Washington didn't just smoke marijuana on his plantation; he grew uh, marijuana, not just uh, hemp rope, um, you know, that type without THC. He was a, a, a big pot smoker. Well, well, I, I ran for Congress. I've I've done uh, live debates. And if anybody thinks for a second that marijuana keeps you from being a producing individual, look at me and the millions of others. Well, Americans. I mean, my whole point is is that is that in the 30s they 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 had reefer madness saying murder and kill people on pot. Uh, they made all these movies uh, to 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 demonize it. They they changed the name to marijuana using the Spanish name, so it sounded alien. Mm -hmm. And then they made something that George Washington and Thomas Jefferson smoked for toothaches in a pipe into something they put in prison for. Exactly. And that's why cop busters and you and 
never get busted or hear. It's a freedom Try issue. To take, it's a freedom issue. It's not just a pot issue. It's not who, if you think it's wrong or if I think it's wrong, it has nothing to do with that. It's a freedom